Ray, you deliver some of my bloody horns, eh, man? <laughs> I didn't ask y'all to do that. That's how Sister Shirley doing that, blowing that horn. <laughs> she said, hurry up and get done with your sermon. All right. Praise the Lord. We do love the Lord today. We thank God that we're not going to hold you along today. But we're going to do what the Lord has asked us to do. We thank God for uh, Sister Marjorie Haynes for blessing us with uh, her great music. Give her a hand. Give her a blow of the horn, somebody, to our choir. Thank you so much, Brother Holloway, Sister Flowers. They are so faithful in just making up the two in our choir. The passage of scripture that we want to look at today, 1 John chapter 4, three verses, verses 17, 18, and 19. The passages of scripture read, Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, as he is because as he is so are we in this world there is no fear in love but perfect love casts out fear because fear hath torment he that feareth is not made perfect in love we love him because he first loved us we love him because he first loved us I want to talk today on this subject God's love is the key to survival in this life God's love is the key to survival in this life dear God we thank you today for this chance to come and to deliver a message to this your people we pray God that you would cleanse us from the top of our head to the bottom of our feet that dear God you would cleanse us from the inside out that we might be able to preach the word as the Holy Spirit has given it unto us. Let us not take any glory, any honor, any praise because all the praise, all the honor and all the glory goes to you O oh God. In Jesus name, Amen and Amen. Jesus' love is the key to survival in this life. God's love, I'm sorry, is the key to survival in this life. 2020 has been a challenging year uh, for all humanity, to say the least. It has been a year of challenges and struggles with unknown and unforeseen factors of life. And that has caused the majority of folk, learned and unlearned, saints and sinners, rich and poor, to have to consider if that we are actually and truly captains of our own fate. This year has had many people realize and recognize the fact that we are not as much as in control of our lives as we may have thought we were in previous years that have gone by. 2020 so far has caused and most rationally minded folk of any level of intelligence to question if God is still in control or has he given up on humanity as an unsavageable project of existence. With so many hurricanes and tropical storms that have come and have crossed the threshold of our coastal and, and Gulf Coast city regions that the National Weather Center is running out of alphabetical letters uh, and replacing them with Greek letters from Alpha to Omega being the next set of letters to be used to name the vast number of hurricanes and tropical storms that have already uh, been seen and have yet to be seen this year. All I've got to do is say the words uh, coronavirus or COVID-19 and fear of the unknown grips the majority of our hearts and minds. Special and political unrest has taken over the news cycle, so much so that we sometimes do not even want to turn on the television set, make us not even want to listen to the radio news bulletins, makes us not even want to scroll on the internet knowing what good yet old information that awaits us. 
with all that we have faced, experienced, seen and heard in these first nine months of 2020, we are left to ponder the thought in our hearts and in our mind as to how are we to survive these last three months of 2020, seeing that 2020 has been such a, a challenging, such a, a tumultuous, such a calamitous, such a turbulent, catastrophic and destructive year for many Americans and inhabitants of the planet that we live on that's called Earth. We are, how are we to survive as human beings living in a time of such unknown factors, circumstances and situations that we are now facing at such a rapid and constant pace as now. Well, my brothers and sisters, there is a clear and biblical answer to this seemingly unanswerable question of this present age. The answer is clear, church. God's love is the key, and it is the key to survival in this life. You see, my friend, God's love radiating from the inside of us will keep us and help us to survive in this life of fear, of confusion, and spiritual unrest. God's love will be the key that triggers and starts the engine of spiritual recovery and put us on the path to peace, peace harmony, and a sound mind in a world such as we live in today. You see, my friend, God's love dwelling in the believer in Jesus Christ through the indwelling person, the power of the Holy Spirit, who is the third person of the Holy Trinity, he will lead us into all truth. How do you know that, brother preacher? Because Jesus Christ told his disciples in the upper room during his last Passover meal with the apostles in John chapter 16, verses 12 through 15 that I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you the things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and show it unto you. Jesus also said, All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and show it unto you. Church, we as Christians, I want you to hear this today. We as Christians are not alone to fight this spiritual and physical battle with the enemy of the brethren. Because we have become believers in Christ and we are washed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. You see, God sends the Holy Ghost uh, to dwell in our hearts forever. His Holy Spirit, uh, He will guide us. His Holy Spirit will lead us. And His Holy Spirit will direct us into all truth. For He shows us what is to come. And if we will listen to God's Holy Spirit, he guides us so that the fear of the unknown is dissipated by the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, church, God's love is the key to survival in this life. For in the epistle of 1 John chapter 4, verse number 17, the apostle John, one of the apostles of Jesus, is in our circle. The apostle who was beloved by Jesus Christ himself writes to us and declares this great biblical truth that herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. The Apostle John, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, my friends, he makes a grand declaration to the believers in Christ Jesus, not to the unregenerate, unbelieving children of Satan, but to the children of the kingdom of God. He lets us know, my friends, unequivocally, that our love is made perfect 
so much so that when we stand before Christ at the beamer seat of judgment, that we can have boldness knowing that his love for us and our acceptance of God's gift of salvation through Christ's sacrifice on Calvary's old rugged cross covers all our sins and unrighteousness. You see, saints, as he is, the Bible says, as Christ is, so are we in this world. In 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 3, the apostle writes to the believers in Christ Jesus. He says, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be just like him. Why is that? For we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifies himself, even as he is pure. You see, we as the sons and daughters of God, listen to me, we have no business as children of God hiding. We have no business running from the battle that is at hand. We are to stand when others are falling by the wayside. Is anybody listening to me? We are to hunker down for this spiritual battle with the devil who is the God of this world. And recognize that our chief cornerstone of the church is none other than Jesus Christ our Lord. You see, my friends, Jesus Christ is a firm, found, firm foundation. And we can stand upon it in times of ultimate despair, in times of trials, and in times of tribulation in this life. We can stand on the promises of God. Look at verse 18 of 1 John chapter 4. The apostle records this holy inspired word that states, there is no fear in love. Can I say that one more time? For somebody that might be fearing right now. There is no fear in love. But perfect love, watch this, cast out fear. Because fear hath torment. You see, he that feareth is not made perfect in love. And then John previously wrote in verse 12 of this same book, No man has seen God at any time if we love one another. Watch this. God dwelleth in us, and love is perfected in us. You see, my friend, God's love is perfected in us when we love one another as God has loved us. I don't care how he or she looks or what you may think about him. If you're in Christ, you're supposed to love your neighbor. You're supposed to love them just as you love yourself. You ought to love them even when they don't love you. Understand, my friends, that there is no fear in love. Why is that, brother preacher? Because perfect love casts out all fear. Huh? You see, if we have the love of God truly dwelling in us, you will not let fear control you. You will not let fear take over you. Huh? You will not let fear of the unknown keep you from doing the things that God have you to do. Because you know uh, that God has got it all in control. You see, when the children, while the children of Satan are trembling in every situation, in every circumstance of life, you'll be standing tall, feeling confident, and not hiding your head in the sand. Because you know that Jesus Christ is the rock of your salvation. He is the wheel in the middle of a wheel. See, my friends, fear will torment you. Fear will keep you from moving forward into your future. Fear will keep you from recognizing who you ought to be in Christ. Because you're so busy worrying about things you can't control. But the Bible declares that fear is not made perfect in love. That is in the love of God. You see, God's love leaves no place for fear to operate in your mind, in your soul, or in your heart. You see, my friends, the love of God is a key to survival in this life. 
Then look at church. Look at the Apostle Paul, who also gave the world, the church, a firm word from God through the Holy Spirit. When he wrote in 2 Timothy 1 7, For God have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Then go over to the Old Testament in Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and look at verses 6, 13, and 14. The words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem, King Solomon pens by inspiration of the Holy Ghost these mighty and powerful and God-given words. He says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. He said, fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Uh, for God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. The Bible says, fear God. For man has no heaven and man has no hell to put you in. Fear God only. I want you to listen to me right now. Do not fear the past, for it is gone. Do not fear the present. For Jesus Christ is with us through the power of the Holy Spirit. Listen to me. Do not fear the future. For my Lord and my God has it all in control. Can I get a witness? He knows the future from the past. He knows the present from the future. He knows the past from the present. You see, my friend, God sees all. <laughs> God hears all. I bet you don't know this. God knows all also. Because God is in control. That's why the Apostle John could write in verse number 19 of 1 John chapter 4 that we love him because he first loved us. Now, let's not get this, this biblical truth backwards. We do not love him first because we didn't have the capacity to love him in that we were sinners. But thanks be unto God that he loved the sinful, heathen, mystic world so much that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, down through 40 and two generations to redeem or buy back the sinner with his own blood that he purchased our salvation. See, my friend, Jesus Christ <laughs> went to the old rugged cross on Calvary's hill. You see, it was nobody but Jesus who hung, bled, and died that we might live. Wasn't nobody but the Lord who suffered in his passion for all mankind. But nobody but Jesus Christ that died the death of a cruel, crucified criminal. A man that knew no sin, but yet he took on the sins of the world on our behalf. You see, my friends, his blood came streaming down. His blood came streaming down and he died. He died till the sun stopped shining. And then they took him off the cross and buried him in Joseph's new tomb. But I'm so glad that wasn't the end of the story. Because early one Sunday morning, early one Sunday morning, early one Sunday morning, got up by the raising of his body by God the Father through the power of the Holy Spirit. He rose. I said he rose. He rose. Alfred Ackley uh, penned the song, says he lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. Anybody know about that? He walks with me. What does he do? Talk to me. A long life's never away. Look at me. Look at this. He lives. He lives. Salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives. He lives in my heart. Somebody ought to say yeah if you love the Lord. Somebody ought to say, say yeah if he's done anything for you. Somebody ought to say yeah. If he woke you up early this morning, you ought to say yeah if God's been mighty good to you. Say yeah if God is your rock and your shield. Say yeah if God saved you from sin. Say yeah if you're on your way to heaven anyhow. I'm so glad that my God, my God can do anything. He can do anything but fail. He won't fail you. Mama, daddy, sister, brother, aunt, uncle, cousin, they will fail you. But God Almighty will never fail you. Because God loves. 
God's love is the key to survival in this present life. So glad to know that God's love will keep us. And if you don't have God's love in your heart, you want to call on God right now. If you know that if you died, that hell would be your home, you want to call on the Lord and ask Him to save your soul. Just say, Dear God in heaven, say, I am a sinner. I'm sorry for all my sins and all my unrighteousness. Dear God, I repent of my sins. Then tell the Lord, now I confess with my mouth, the Lord Jesus. And I believe right now in my heart that God raised him from the dead. And with the belief and confession of your mouth, you are saved. You are saved. You are saved. If you've been saved, you'll just say, I am saved. <laughs> I am saved. I am saved. Good God Almighty, somebody ought to give God some praise for salvation. Give God some praise for, for saving your soul. Give him some praise for being so good to you. God is all right with me. I don't care what others may say. I won't never turn my back on the Lord. Because the Lord has done too much for us. Isn't God good, y'all? <laughs> I don't know nothing about this thing. Isn't God good today? It's good to know that if God stay before us, He's more than the world could ever be against us. I will lift up my eyes towards the hills from which cometh my help. Oh, my help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and who made earth. Praise the Lord, somebody. Amen. God bless you. The doors of the church are now open. Will there be one today who wants to come and give your life to the Lord? You can come.